Good morning, everybody. This is uh, uh, Saturday, September 14th. Hope you all had a good Friday the 13th. Uh, yesterday, uh, met a couple. Looked like they'd been together forever, but they actually met a little after midnight uh, uh, Friday morning. And anyway, they're having the best time and uh, best wishes. Um, uh, the uh, Friday the 13th was a good day. Number 13 has always been a, a good luck symbol for me. You know, I got past the superstitions. And yes, there are some things that was really bad that happened on a Friday the 13th years ago. And you can look up that history. But the... Uh, uh, Today, I want to get into a little bit of discussion of uh, Merlin's hat. And what brought this topic up, uh, I never heard it. You know, let's unfold Merlin's hat. And the uh, uh, this video is for you, Scott. I uh, did a little research on unfolding Merlin's hat. And I thought it was going to be one of those things like, uh, hey, buddy, that's Jason coming in. Uh, the, uh, uh, the unfolding Merlin's hat uh, uh, is evidently a saying that I hadn't heard or so many sayings I hadn't heard and when I hear them again uh, uh, it's kind of like the punchline and some people know what I'm talking about the uh, yeah but this one's eating my popcorn so the uh, uh, before I get into unfolding Merlin's hat uh, want to uh, correct something I was reviewing yesterday. I called resistors, variable resistors and uh, resistors uh, when I was bringing this up, transistors. And of course, they're not transistors. I know that y'all knew what I'm talking about, but the, uh, somehow I got distracted. And when I was pointing at the resistors, I said transistors. But uh, anyway, I wanted to walk back and correct a little something on the uh, basic Bedini circuit. Uh, the, let's get into unfolding Merlin's hat and how I think it relates. Um, uh, what is Merlin's hat? Okay. And so I took the liberty in my preparation to, it's not a complete Merlin's hat because it doesn't have the brim on it, but I rolled up a piece of paper and, you know, basically paper, uh, we can make patterns from it. So I can cut this with a pair of scissors. I can cut this edge off and I can have the basics to build the pattern for the cone of a Merlin's hat. And uh, some of you guys may not even know what I'm talking about, but in the old days, we used to get mail. Okay, in an envelope, you know, y'all call it snail mail and communication and sending messages. Uh, there's so many ways to send in messages, uh, cryptid, uncrypted, uh, people getting gematria and all the other things. And the, we're not going to go into all that, but one of the neatest things as a kid, the way they sent messages uh, to neighborhoods, it wasn't by the mail, by was by this marvelous little uh, uh, device and they had a piece of tape on it that it was folded up on the end so you could take that piece of tape and unfold the message. And the way they delivered that message in the front yard was basically through a tube and they would put the unit in the tube and they had a little uh, air puff that would blow it out from the street into people's yards. And so this, unit harmlessly, you know, doesn't weigh very much, didn't hurt anything. We come and land into the yard like a yard dart. And a lot of times that'd be sticking up right there in your front yard. And uh, so even back then they drove older cars when they delivered these messages and, and came through and you unfold it. And it, it had a, you know, message that might be, may or may not be interesting to you. Uh, and, uh, but, this was kind of like the first art forms to me of aerodynamics because the way that it was rolled made it uh, heavier. It had a center of gravity uh, with uh, pressure. And as it flew through the media, uh, 
um, that could be unrolled. And then, you know, you take the piece of tape off and then you could read the message. And normally they were printed on both sides. So the, just some old history there. And uh, this particular one is about a fishing pole, okay? And it collapsed up and was really small. And, uh, 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 but just, just wanted to give you some, some heads up what uh, unfolding Merlin's hat is. And so Scott Russell, my hat's off to Scott. Uh, he's the one that clued me in to Eli the Iceman in Merlin's hat. And the uh, when I design things, uh, one of my favorite things to design packaging in, believe it or not, is spaghetti. And spaghetti and a hot glue gun and uh, different shapes and everything. I construct a lot of things uh, to figure out the envelope uh, of the size, the size box. And then what's in that box, of course, is, is uh, different. You'll notice in my plethora of stuff that I put aside, uh, the reason I lay packaging up uh, has several, several reasons. Uh, oh, by the way, today uh, I'm probably going to get interrupted. So this is one of those interruptions. Be right back. But anyway, when uh, uh, I pull stuff uh, like that, and uh, uh, basically I like to, to live in what I call a California closet. Uh, all these cabinets behind me have specific things in them, and the things that are in those cabinets have a specific place where I don't have to think about it. And then, uh, of course, in a shop area, especially I'm under construction. A lot of people don't realize this, but, uh, my living room is all empty or upstairs bedroom is all empty and got finished with the painting part. And so a lot of stuff is misplaced because we're under construction, you know, it's just the way it is. So, you know, the, uh, uh, but eventually all my little, doodads will fit inside each other. They'll be labeled where I can see them. I, uh, uh, I know where they're at. Um, one of the things that you'll find out about me is there's some people that are, are, are filers. They file them all neat. And I do some filing, okay, of, of things that I need to represent. But after I'm through, I pile it, okay? And the um, uh, uh, so I'm a filer and a piler, but uh, – Basically, in that pile, I know exactly uh, where everything is in that pile because it's just kind of uh, chronological. When I started, the stuff I started on is going to be at the bottom, of course, and then, you know, month, two, three, four, I know where that's at. And I go, oh, I did that about four months ago, and I can start looking, and boom, I find it pretty quick. So for me, with what I do, I'm very active, and it always amazes me uh, how much stuff when uh, others, you know, finally want to file the work that I've piled and then I can't find anything. You know, <laughs> so, anyway, uh, excuse my little piles behind me, but, uh, getting into Merlin's hat, um, the, uh, uh, the off the shelf aircraft that are out there getting back to my motor, um, you know, they have specific weight and balance that's already been uh, added to them. I really don't want to add lead and other things to them. So I have to know what the the envelope is. And that's what I call, that's what I'm now going to call Merlin's hat. And then unfolding Merlin's hat or unrolling Merlin's hat. And uh, uh, um, uh, is the information. Well, the... Uh, when you're taking the things that are in your mind that you've seen, uh, um, 
I know Jason's trying to, uh, or is working at it. Uh, I'm sure he's right there on the edge of it. Um, he's wanting to build an emergency generator that will run an awful long time on uh, very, middle, very little supplemental uh, primary power. And the, uh, that's one of the things that attracted me to the schoolgirl Bedini was because I did see that potential in there that that was kind of like the pilot light to uh, run a lot of things. And then, of course, with Gerard Moore showing us the dishwasher pump motor in uh, um, that area, and then he showed us the Oriental motor, or the uh, 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 um, Pulse DC motors, uh, in his art form, uh, collaborating with another guy, I understand, uh, they came up with a system that, 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 uh, is not perfect, but it works. And the, uh, uh, you know, the, the electrical grid that we've been using has been working for a very long time and relatively safe and also has created a lot of jobs, uh, everything from the poles and wire people, uh, to the people that manufacture transformers and even people that, uh, the oil that's in the transformer. So when you really go through and look at all the components of just our infrastructure of our power grid, uh, lots of jobs are being created. There lots of things for people to do in that physical, uh, construct of reality. And, you know, they do their best to keep power going 99, nine tenths of the time on the, mains uh, side of it and so i have no problem with uh the electrical infrastructure of what we do um the anybody that uh comes to you and say you know free energy um uh the yeah you, you know taking a, a a plug and plugging another plug within it and making that thing work uh you know, it's a fantasy, not to say that it's not possible, but if you do it, there's going to be a magician's trick <laughs> to do it. I mean, there's going to be a thin wire or, or something that's carrying high voltage and then transformed down uh, Tesla technology, wireless technology sitting under the desk. There's going to be a, um, a trick to it. So anybody that tells you free, uh, uh, there's, there's no free lunch when it comes to, to energy. Uh, we keep getting the cues higher and higher and higher and uh, uh, getting the basics of what's going on uh, with electrical engineering um, is, is really neat. Now, I just kind of touched on yesterday, um, you know, uh, the 15 KVA transformer, uh, it was pretty much the transformer uh, that operated uh, farmhouses, you know, about a hundred amp service. And then they moved to 2,500 KVA for all electric homes, uh, um, uh, 200 amp service. And then right on up in the commercial in, uh, side of it, you use three phase because you can use smaller wire. So you have a lot of wire in a commercial operation. And you can use, uh, break it down, use uh, 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 units that uh, um, don't run as much wire. So any way you look at it, that's the way it is. When you're going to the manufacturing side, you have to understand the big manufacturings like Westinghouse, Sylvania. Um, yes, they happen to build light bulbs or they happen to build uh, vacuum tubes. And um, But the real understanding of the way things work is that, those guys were, are, are um, basically brokers in the commodities of futures markets uh, because, uh, like in a light bulb, for example, uh, you got tungsten. Okay, well, they knew how much tungsten they were going to produce, so they actually have control <laughs> of the market for tungsten in buying and selling those items. Uh, glass, the same thing. All the other parts, the, even the gas that uh, they used in them. So they, they, they're not only in the uh, light bulb business or tube business or whatever piece that they were designing, they were um, uh, uh, 
in the market control of developing these you know, items and become, uh, it is a special club that makes it all work, GE. Um, and so, yes, there are th some things that are hidden in plain sight uh, that we're all interested in, but uh, uh, bottom line is, is unfolding uh, the, the hat and seeing what it is and seeing the uh, creations that you can create, I can create, others can create, and drawing up the specifications and plans and things uh, with that. Uh, uh, so, can Merlin's hat be folded? Certainly. You, know, you can fold it, cut it, design it, send it snail mail, and the in that, it's just like the book of the internet. I just call the, I always call the internet uh, computers um, just a big book. I mean, uh, in a perfect society uh, where money wasn't just the motivation to do things, all these things would uh, be open to where our kids could just tap in uh, to education. But you don't get something for nothing. It took a lot of work to get there. And so our society learning to uh, give to get to give again, uh, you can't earn or deserve it. It's the, uh, uh, but there, there's reasons for things to be licensed by companies as far as releasing the technology on unit basis. Because the main thing that I'm concerned about I'm real fortunate. Okay. I was raised in an area that I had a lot of latitude, uh, as a child. Uh, and I was able to work on stuff that, uh, some, most adults didn't even know about. And a lot of people, you know, in my upbringing, they went, you know, where are your parents? You know, where were your parents during all the different things that you were doing? And they were right there and I could talk to them and they kept me safe, but uh, I had a little bit different understanding of what, Safe was, and you know, uh, uh, it's just like I was touching base on my thing I wanted to do as a uh, child. Um, um, if I'd had it available when I was 16 years old, uh, in my heart of hearts, yeah, I'd busted right on through what the performance could be just to see what it's like to be there, not having supplemental oxygen and other things. Uh, uh, could have happened. I don't know if it would have happened. I was, I've always been one of those. When I heard a story about somebody doing something that got them hurt, I'd listen to the story and uh, I'd do my best not to duplicate uh, that again. But anytime that you, you take Merlin's hat and you give all the information of how that's done, there are hazards that other people can create. And so uh, we're coming to a paradigm that, uh, we have communication. We have kids that are smarter than, uh, uh, I'm not going to say smarter, but the, they're more educated, uh, even though you don't think so. Um, when I was teaching uh, flight schools, uh, people would ask me and say, well, I can get my pops chief in 21, 22 hours. I said, well, yeah, it's possible. But let me tell you the difference. Um, the uh, if your parents were both pilots and everywhere you went, you flew with your mama or you flew with your daddy, you'd already know what distances look like. Uh, you'd know what the structure looked from uh, in the air. Um, the You know the basic navigation systems. You know everything from taxi in to uh, takeoff, uh, uh, upwind, crosswind, downwind, uh, uh going to base and final approach. And you'd already have that stuff ingrained in you. Well, I mean, just like somebody in a car, you know, uh, supposedly there are people that drove horse and buggies and wagons and stuff like that. Well, they knew how to handle horses and, you know, uh, yoke up the uh, animals to uh, do that thing, which is something that most of our generation didn't know. I learned to do that later on, raising horses and working with cutting horses and, other things. I'm really a countryfied city boy. Okay, the uh, had all the panache and polish of the, of the 
city gentleman and went to the country and got my real education out in the country. The uh, one of the amazing things about uh, guys that live out there, they don't necessarily have, uh, and they do now, but back in the day, uh, they worked with a lot of hit and miss engines, especially in the oil field. And the the guys that live in the country, even though they may not have the exact part to make it fit, they keep that stuff running until they were able to get the part that was available. And so that ingenuity became part of an art form that, uh, excuse me, be right back. So that became part of an art form of those guys keeping those uh, different uh, pumping units uh, working. And the uh, they would, uh, at meetings and stuff, they were able to collaborate. And, of course, their supervisors uh, would pass, you know, what so-and-so did on another side of the world uh, uh, to keep that stuff running. So the... the uh, you know, a whole lot with hit and miss engines uh, have to do with, uh, um, I call it priming the nitrogen to heat up under vacuum and then running through the compression stroke. And it's different from a steam engine, but nitrogen, since our atmosphere is a little over 75%, nitrogen is the guy that's doing the work. And the, that's really true. It came up uh, through racing and learning different parts of technology. And like I mentioned earlier is that, uh, you can hydrogenate a block and the hydrogen that's within the block is basically a battery that helps that process long and you can develop more horsepower out of the same configuration. So a lot of the things that are under Merlin's hat, uh, that are in plain sight, uh, uh have an arc form that's on the nanoscale. And so uh, nanotechnology, one of the first people to really uh, make that clear um, uh, is an Iranian uh, man that uh, uh, created a whole company using nanotechnology uh, to build another type of battery. And he called it GANS. You can look that up. And so through uh, um, uh, working with the GANS materials, you can build uh, all kinds of potentials between the different types of, of metals that you're building. And um, um, it lends itself into a lot of different areas. So always remember that just because you don't understand the basic components that's in there, how they're treated, uh, how the components are treated in that is part of what I call Marlin's hat. Uh, uh, you know, what's underneath there, what's the information that's in there. Um, uh, you can do that. So anyway, as uh, the main point that uh, I'm trying to bring up is uh, when you're developing your mine or our uh, product that's in your mind, uh, I'm just going to share, you know, the way that I do it. And that is, is um, when I finally come down to the point that I want to manifest uh, uh, a different spinoff of devices, and usually it's from something that I've seen, and that spins off into things I know about. Uh, uh, I try to figure out the envelope. And what I mean by the envelope is, are the specifications. Uh, the specifications when I wound my uh, asymmetrical motor uh, was that, okay, I want it to handle 10 amps, actually more than 10 amps, but I want to design the parameters at 10 amps. In other words, everything in that part of the system, uh, I designed it to be 10 amps. So 10 amps is the, um, 
envelope. Okay. The next part of the envelope was I wanted to be able to, uh, I, I built this motor uh, uh, parameter of 100 horsepower. The, the one I've shown you, the, uh, the one that I run at two horsepower most of the time um, on this brother. I built two of them at the same time when I did this. Okay, but the uh, this motor is designed to handle 10 amps, okay? And it'll handle uh, with the components that I used in it very high voltage. And you just got to do the math. And I like using 10 because my little old calculator brain um, uh, you know, one horsepower is 750 watts. Okay. So you got 10 amps that's available there. Then it's pretty simple. One horsepower is, uh, uh, returning back through the system to 75 volts. Okay. The, uh, even though the seed energy is, uh, uh, uh between 36 and 48 volts. And then two horsepower, 1500 volts is coming back to it. So then when it gets to 100, then you got 15,000 volts uh, coming back, and that'll handle 15,000 volts of pulse DC energy. Uh, uh, and so that's what I did. I started the envelope of what it was that I wanted to build through specifications, and then I built that. And the um, uh, the specifications that I'm doing with the aircraft engine, uh, would this work for an aircraft engine? Uh, yeah, I can spin it up high speed, but that's not really what I'm wanting to do. I'm, uh, the, the RPM that a, a propeller on a single engine piston plane, uh, turns, uh, 2,750 RPM. And so with the pitch and everything, depending on the torque, um, it's much nicer to spend it, spin it a little bit slower, uh, you know, 2,600 RPM. And can you gear those things to be done? Yeah, but then you're going to a gear reduction gearbox. Not that that's a problem. I mean, you can do that. Uh, high speed motors that are well balanced, you have no problem running them at 30,000 RPM. Um, but the, uh, you want it to get it to uh, simplicity. And so, you do have choices and trade-offs going through your boxes of, of what you can do, but the actual motor that I want, you know, want to build is be designed to uh, turn uh, at uh, 2,700 RPM. And the reason for that is because when you start spinning a prop uh, past that, the length of the prop, uh, uh, the swing on it uh, starts approaching about 750 miles an hour at the tips. And you don't want to break the sound barrier at the tips uh, of having them spend it. Uh, uh, seven uh, hundred and fifty miles an hour. It's kind of amazing the way uh, when you divide it by ten about uh, uh, correspondences, especially with aerodynamics and other things uh, in it. So, like I said, you're the one that's wearing Merlin's hat. You're the one that's wanting to. to uh, design your devices, uh, you're seeing things that are out there, just take into consideration that there are lots of tricks to the trade to um, uh, do more than what you've been told, um, especially nowadays as that's becoming more apparent. And the uh, you're the one that's going to combine those, but my my advice, what I and I take my own advice is, you know, it's not one of these things. You know, do what I say, not what I do. Uh, 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 I'll mock up with boxes, paper, anything that's I have readily available at hand, and make me a physical mock up of what it is I'm going to build because the you can see what's going to fit in there and. Uh, uh, then I'll model it, and then all I got to do once I get that up, and I can scale it up to that size. So know what weights you're trying to achieve, know your targets uh, uh, in those things, and you'll be much more successful making a package that that uh, will work. And then once you get there, then you can find other useful uh, purposes for that same packaging that was intended for one thing. I mean, you know the 
uh, many time I've started down a road designing uh, something and I'll go chase a rabbit if I can, you know, I'm under uh, uh, deadlines and stuff. I'll go chase a rabbit and all of a sudden I go, wow, that's a better way to do that. The, uh, uh, what's neat getting back to what we're actually working on is the resonance that uh, facilitated by uh, contact point, spring loaded contact point circuits, uh, such as the Model T Ford Buzz Box, is the uh, you skip a lot of grades, and you, uh, it's another way of seeing from a different angle of potentials that that, that the uh, the positive feedback that I'm getting off of that is kind of like, wow, why didn't I know about this uh, 40 years ago? You know, I could have had the opportunity to, but didn't. So anyway, we unfolded Merlin's hat and my interpretation of Merlin's hat. Uh, uh, the, uh, everybody has a magic wand and the, uh, understanding those principles of uh, what's in there, the possibilities, uh, the different wands and coils and effects, uh, you know, the, uh, just with this coil right here, so much more to experiment with it than what I've done. I, you know, I got the basics, uh, that I needed, uh, from it to do what I wanted to do, but, uh, uh you know, touching the edge of, uh, uh, you know, common things being put together and getting a better understanding of how I can apply it to what I'm doing and to uh, make another Merlin's hat and then unfold it and then uh, my intent is to, to share it. So, Jason, thank you for stopping by. You have any questions for me? You have anything that you think I can answer? Uh, I noticed something, Jason. Uh, this is kind of funny. Uh, I thought that was an eagle, but I looked closer, and I think that's a bat, right? Am I right? And I want to share something. When I started working with the 3.3 kilohertz, okay, not very fast frequency, um, The we had bats actually come into our house, <laughs> okay, and – Okay. Well, we actually had bats come into our house. And so I thought it was kind of an accident to 3.3 kilohertz. And every time I duplicate the 3.3 kilohertz uh, resonance in my house, and there's a whole nother Merlin's hat uh, to be unfolded in that. But uh, well, we get bats and not just bats outside, bats in the house. So the, uh, since you're, uh, uh, okay, the fox bat, the largest bat in the world. So, yeah, the uh, uh, when I happened to notice that, like I said, I thought it was an eagle and then uh, uh, got through there. But one of the spinoffs from the uh, technology that I work, like I said, in the 3.3 kilohertz range, is if I operate that very long, it's a bat attractor. And it's fruit bats that it attracts in my area. And uh, what's been amazing is, is they actually come into the house. So it's, it, uh, first time I did it, I thought it was an accident. Second time, you know, well, what's going on here? And then the third time, it's kind of like, okay. And so anyway, the, uh, uh, um, um, uh, but did, did you happen to come across your logo for a bat because of attracting them with the stuff that you're working on, Jason? Well, I want to hear the rest of the story on uh, uh, why Jason chose the logo. I chose Prometheus a long time ago as my avatar um, because the uh, I enjoy teaching um, uh, uh, others how to uh, do different things. Uh, no, he says, no, it is due with my wing suit. Oh, okay. Flying. I know you. Another. Uh, another guy. You know, in my dreams, uh, I fly uh, 
without any suit. I just, I just take off in my dreams. Okay. That's my dream. Not, not, not reality, not construct, but I'm able to fly anywhere I want to go. And I'm able to go as fast or slow, um, uh, without it. So, you know, is that, is that a reality? You, well, to me it is cause I've dreamed it so many times through the years and the, uh, um, so the, but I've never been interested in, in building a, uh, 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 a rocket suit. <laughs> however, however it works in my dream, it works in the dream. And I'm not ready to bring it into this construct and, and make it happen. The, uh, uh, but yeah, the, uh, it, it's really amazing in my dreams. I go places, uh, um, and I have my little cues and landing lights and stuff. Uh, even though I don't have a heads up display of navigation or where I'm going, I can pretty well navigate where I want to go in my dreams, uh, just off the instinct of it. So, you know, am I in my Markaba flying around and stuff like that? I try not to get into all that, but, uh, 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 I can pretty well navigate where I want to go. Honestly, when I dream, uh, uh, other than flying like that and a few other little things, um, like last night I was, uh, I remember it pretty vividly cause we were working on a rocket system with, you know, real people that I know and stuff. And there was another person I didn't know in this dream. And, uh, he was really working with some different stuff that we're all curious in. Um, uh, uh, and he was trying to show us something and we were trying to get it all, uh, down to the envelope of what it was that he was trying to teach us. And so I remember, <laughs> I remember that from the dream. Most of the time I don't remember, uh, stuff, uh, to bring in this construct as I call it. I call it the construct, physical construct, yours, mine, our construct. Uh, however, you know, the, uh, I like to, see the uh, uh, different things that go on into it. I got to sign off. I got to get to work. Uh, mama's uh, uh, rooms need to be steam clean and get the dust up from all our construction and get in the process of getting everything out to gave her target date of Monday to where we'll have the living room back to normal and have the uh, upstairs bedroom all back to normal. And then, the other stuff I had to put all this down for a long time. Now y'all can kind of understand why, but, uh, as winter's coming on, I got to get, uh, uh, doing the she shed, but I can handle that, uh, without, uh, uh, too much interference, but I've been running in overtime, just trying to get the physical things done just around the house. So, uh, uh, you know, it, Jason, I appreciate you coming by and the, I can't wait to get, down to stuff where I'm doing stuff like Roy of actually showing you guys how I build uh, different things uh, with a still camera, but Roy does it so well. I've enjoyed watching Roy for a long time and I did, you know, I've watched Roy for years now and uh, he wants to know how to levitate rocks. But even though the end goal that uh, uh, he's going for, he doesn't care if he can lift a rock or not. He's enjoyed the discovery of taking the steps of, of, of what's possible. Uh, going back to the Egyptians and stuff, I'm thoroughly convinced that they poured rocks just like we pour fiberglass and polymers. And, um, um, it's just a matter of, the, you know, design and scale. But, uh, yeah, the, uh, some things, like I said earlier in my experience, some things work better on the macro scale in this construct and some things work better on the micro plank level scale with nanotechnologies and it's just a matter of the envelope specification of what your end result is. And once you figure that part out, the, the rest of it comes pretty easy. So the, uh, the Jason, you have a blessed day and keep up the good work and I'm going to get back to work and know what I did. I just wanted to drop off a video about, uh, uh, unfolding Merlin's hat and, what that means. And, uh, um, I still have one more, uh, uh, fifth edition of talking more about, uh, metronomic, uh, resonance. 
And then I'm going to do a button up that'll be six on that. Uh, everything I've come together and just uh, take the long winded stuff and make it simplicity of what it is that I'm actually talking about. And then uh, going through and building devices that um, uh, are spin off from the Bedini in different coils and configurations. And with the newfound uh, resonating spring loaded spark gap that Roy's come up with, uh, uh, there's so much creation. You guys, uh, 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 well, the thing is about my syllabus right now, as far as this side is, uh, I have a basic guideline of what I'm uh, wanting to teach, but the, uh, uh, the, uh, it's being refined, but yeah, the, uh, 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 I'll, I'll post the syllabus and uh, get that done where I'll share it with everybody. Um, it, it's a, it, this part of the syllabus concerning energy is under development. I, I know the end goal. And uh, as, as we get people aware of what's possible out there, uh, I don't want to limit anybody. I don't, I, the, the thing that, that really happens is that the parameters that I was raised around is that uh, you can't do this or that. Okay. And it's not that you can't. Okay. What the deal is, is it interferes with the uh, infrastructure that a lot of money, a lot of time, a lot of people are invested in. And so you can't just go changing the paradigm of what's in place and uh um that's the the uh, uh the real thing i've shared this before what got me into the asymmetrical design was the lockridge device and two american soldiers walked into a uh, barn when cleanup operation at the end of world war ii germany and there was an emergency generator running lights and the uh, it didn't really have a battery that they could see that was hooked up to it, but it was running lights. And so the soldiers uh, with boots and whatever as the story goes, uh, got this device stopped. And anyway, they put it uh, in their possession, didn't get, turn it over to the government and brought it home. And it was known as the Lockridge device because he was one of the soldiers that did it. And so I worked for about two and a half, three years, keeping that in mind, not just focusing on that side of the research, but what led me to the parametric motor, uh, uh, Mojin, uh, what I call the metronomic Mojin motor generator, uh, was a Lockridge device. And uh, uh, um, the, uh, uh, it was just a matter of reverse engineering and finding out how that worked and the uh, they've duplicated it and used to have them for sale back in the 60s believe it or not uh, uh, made from Volkswagen parts made from Volkswagen generator uh, the lockers generator generator that was a 400 watt uh, 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 device similar to what I'm working on and so uh, a lot of people are reduplicating uh, this and the uh, it's not that I don't want to show it. I just don't want to limit somebody to being focused just on that part of it because the, there are different spinoffs that if you just stop it there, uh, there's some technology that's hidden right there in plain sight that would be lost. And I want others to see that. And the only way to see it is to experiment with it and build it up and start making your own device and, uh, you know, um, uh, find the tools that basically, you know, on, I call, I call this part of my hobby, um, uh, where I could spend my, throw my dis discretionary, uh, uh, funds. In other words, funds that I can just give away and, uh, uh, uh put aside, which, you know, there's not very much of that really. And other people are the same. So the, uh, and I keep myself on a budget for this technology 
of about a hundred dollars uh, a month. Okay. In other words, the, um, uh, I'm not going to spend more than a hundred dollars a month, uh, building what I build. So I, I, I like to make everything count and other people do too. And the Bedini motor, you know, you can build it very easily for, uh, about $30, you know? So the, um, that's the fun of what we're doing is, is taking, uh, something that doesn't take a lot of money really and make discoveries. Yes. You have to work with it and do it, but, uh, um, it, it's my habit that just keeps my mind going uh, nowadays and, uh, um, as far as my hobby, but I get, I do get to spin off and use it in, you know, my real job and the, that part of it, I enjoy, you know, so it makes me better at my real job, but uh, 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 I'm not planning on making any money from this, this side of it. Anyway, you guys have a blessed day and keep on keeping on, uh, keep on creating. Jason, uh, can't wait to see your syllabus as well. So come up with your syllabus and uh, 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 the, we'll see your Merlin's hat. You'll be seeing my Merlin's hat and we'll unfold it and get down to details. And as a collaborative community in this open source, uh, I expect good things to be happening. So anyway, as I always say, hope you're having fun because we are.